All right, so it's now time for Interactive. Remember to download the Sportsmax app from the Google Play or the App Store and watch premium sports action, including the WTA, Brisbane International, and the third test between Australia and Pakistan from Sydney. Also, be sure to check out our clips on X, Instagram and YouTube. All right, so just here to give you an update on La Liga. Barcelona was able to come from behind to defeat Las Palmas 2-1. And Lance Whitaker was so happy about it. So let's check out that winning goal. Do we have the highlights? And then we can hear from Lance. All right, so we just have that winning goal. Lance. It seems. So they came from, they came from behind. Uh, they went behind after just 12 minutes and the former Manchester City <laughs> German is about to and do what he does Jamaica, best stitch, stitch the neck <laughs> <laughs> so Barcelona with a, a 2-1 victory coming from behind and uh, this signals the end of round 19 yeah. there are 7 points off of the lead Barcelona in 3rd and uh, at the moment we are looking at a 38 game season 19 rounds gone this season isn't over. No, of yeah, course we, not. We know that Girona and uh, Real Madrid are setting the pace, but there's there's too much football left for us to suggest that this is a, a two-horse race. I know Barcelona has been inconsistent, which is the point Brent has made and the point that um, Juan made earlier on today. So it's hard to bank on Barcelona, you know, being strong to the back end of the season. But I think they are good enough to improve, and. Um, I think there's a lot of football left in this La Liga season. Yeah, and I know you're happy because you made the comment, Lance, and I agree with you that, you know, it's too much football for it to just be a two-horse race from here. You know, there are quality teams despite um, the team struggling, and we expect that coming to the end of a season mm -hmm. or midway. Injuries are something yeah. uh, we were talking about with La Liga from the top of the season because some right. of the players didn't even start the season they fell in during the season so for me I'm happy to see Barcelona coming back to some sort of form and I'm hoping that they can continue along this path yeah also in the last hour news coming through from Trinidad and Tobago oh, yeah. that Angus Eve has had his contract as a national coach renewed and extended to I think December 2025 so good, uh, good on you mate uh, <laughs> yeah really happy Angus yeah. Eve of course a friend of the sports Max so and, and he's been doing some really good things with Trinidad and Tobago football so we're going to continue now and we're going to head to YouTube to take some comments on Wednesday segment discussing the changes made by Cricket West Indies to their backroom staff all right, so Iceman says yet another example of the coherent and joined up thinking of the Windies Cricket Board. Not this board strides, no, not. This board strides confidently from one, one calamity to another. So Denoki says, Lance, how can one blame the selectors for the World Cup qualifiers? Debacle. Debacle. Mm. June says, there is a God. Fix it, fix it. Grogu, they fired the wrong Haynes. It should have been Desmond Haynes. Lands. Yeah, um, a lot of comments coming through that represented just a few of them. Um, the thing is, when, when we mentioned about the World Cup qualifying failure, I put that question to Reds because he was suggesting that based on series results and how the team performed during 2023, that Roland Butcher's non-renewal of his contract was a little hard to digest. That was the point uh, Reds was making. So I was, from a journalistic standpoint, saying that you know if you're going to judge the, the team's successes by what the selectors did, then if the team fails, then you know the selectors would have to take some responsibility as well. But I quite agree with that comment on YouTube. I and I've said it many times on the show. West Indies failures for me uh, have not been due to selection issues. No, you've We're, said that. You said it yesterday, actually. I, I say it all the time. I'm not saying that selectors are perfect and sometimes they don't make decisions that are hard to accept. But generally speaking, West Indies cricket failures over the past two or three decades in no way, shape or form for me has been due to selection issues. Yeah. All right. It's the well, performance of the team and the players. Yeah, and it's for me, whenever I... Um, coming up to some sort of conclusion lands i could never separate one thing from the other for me it's always a combination of factors because all of these things work together 
for of course you know that one performance or these performances so i can't just take everything apart and say okay the selectors are only responsible because okay you can select a team but when the players go out to play coaching has a part of it and sometimes when i get these comments um i try not to get annoyed at them because we're on air and of course we're trying to give a sensible view but some of the viewers when they send these messages they yeah. don't think about all the different parts yeah and it's good that we spoke with anthony dianrad earlier on today from guyana because he was talking to us about the infrastructure that is in place in in guyana mm -hmm. but there's no question that one of the biggest problems in west indies cricket is the infrastructure both with facilities and uh, programs to develop young players because that is part of the issue that that sets some of the Australians and Indians apart from from the West Indies. There is just not enough proper infrastructure and and money to invest in development tools for cricketers. So the West Indies at the moment are in many ways behind the eight ball, and a lot of it has to do with money and uh, the inability of not only Cricket West Indies, but the territorial the boards yeah. to pump, and the governments, to pump the amount of, of resources financially necessary to develop players. And yeah. the West Indies um, can look at that issue as part, just part of the reason, because I'm agreeing with you, yeah, that it's not one point. issue that has West Indies cricket where it is now, but yes. certainly resources and a lack of money and infrastructure would 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 rank as part of the issues holding back West Indies cricket. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought that up because even when I asked him the question, he spoke about getting an analyst and database and all these yeah. things. Uh, countries, powerhouses, they usually those things are natural for them. They're accustomed to having all these resources. It's part for the course. Yeah, at their disposal. So, you know, we're just making the best with what we have around the Caribbean. Well, so with cricket, what are fans saying about India's historic win over South Africa in Cape Town? The match was as short as ever to produce a result in test cricket history. Let's head across to X now. We have Jay. He says, heroes without cape in town. Congrats for this win, India versus South Africa. And then Cape Town, hashtag Cape Town. Jay's, Jay's a comedian. Yeah. Mm. All right, Kirkett, brilliant performance by the Indian team. Fire. DK says, and this is Dinesh Kartik, this match had so much in so little time. To bat in a bowler's paradise is a big test. Some great bowling performances and a brave knock from Mark Rum on such a tricky pitch. Would have loved to see another test in this intense series for a decider. Erufan Patan says undefeated tour of South Africa for Team India. What thumping victory is this special? What about Zagham? Records are made to be broken. India versus South Africa. Well, that was some top stuff. Yeah, well... Another thing that I'm on record as saying is that I have a very high regard for India. They're number yes. one in world cricket at the moment in all formats, ODI, T20 and, and Test cricket as well. And um, I, I thought when they lost the first test against the South Africans that I was confident that they would win the second because I've likened India's cricketing talent at the moment to West Indies in its strong years. There is no cr cricket team in the history of world cricket that has been as dominant as the West Indies were under Clive Lloyd and Viv Richards. That's a fact. Yes. But it is very evident that the proliferation of quality cricketers coming out of India in the past decade resembles the kind of um, factory-like productivity that the Western is <laughs> able to produce yeah. um, in, 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 our, in our glory days. And I say that to say, uh, when they lost the first test, I said, you know what, these South Africans just woke up the Indians. When the yeah. second test comes around, the Indians will win. And they did. A bit of a struggle because it wasn't an easy pitch to bat on. But India's uh, cricket talent at the moment is um, is so explosive and uh, deserves a lot of respect. Yeah. Let's let, let's see what happens in in their next assignments. Yeah, I understand because you know so one of the things with me is like based on India's factory like um, production yes. of players. Sometimes it annoys me because I'm like, why can't we do that? Why, as soon as one goes, why can't another one just be born? And then we have another star and we keep generating them like that. Yeah. Well, part of the reason is cricket to the Caribbean is not now what it was 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, the average teenager in, Jam in Jamaica and the Caribbean now, not as gung-ho about cricket 
as we would have found in the Caribbean in the 60s and 70s. And that's one of the main reasons why the, the passion isn't there for cricket in the way that it was before. And we're reaping the backlash. Yeah, because I'm thinking, yeah. you better not say rewards, there's <laughs> none of that. So choose your words wisely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to, yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, producer is letting me know that Dean Elgar retired? Yeah, this was his last test. He yeah. announced this from before and he was the player of the series. He had 100 in the first test, I think. Um, a big hundred, a daddy hundred. Yeah, daddy hundred. <laughs> now Lance is going to use that term a lot. <laughs> yeah, he made Thanks, one, Guyana. I think 185. Um, so he has left on a good note, uh, except the fact that they lost the last test. Yeah, that he played, unfortunate. But, um, yeah, in two days, it's the record shortest test match with a result in the history of the game. But Elgar is a is a is a solid, solid, solid player. Um, so he has finished with test cricket. Right, and we're getting ready to leave our viewers. Um, they're going to see that final match by David Warner. Uh, <laughs> you know, some of the good, good players, the ones that we love to watch are leaving us. But mm. like India, that continues to produce talent, I'm hoping that the other teams can do the same. So yeah. do we leave them now so they get ready for that? Yeah? All right, viewers. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow, same time, same place. And we're leaving you with a treat. Hope you enjoy this match. Solomon and David had laid this by the dozens then Why can't I be greedy? Oh, yeah. Tell me why, yo, oh, why, yo, oh, why? Yeah. Why me for off one girl when Continental girl I take set One me for themself forever except Man, 